Hi, I'm John from Proper Printing and I've bought this 1000 watt heater and this 1000 watt heater mat and I'm going to control this with this Duet 2 Wi-Fi. Before I'm going to connect this to this Duet board, I'm going to show you quickly how it's connected, how this solid state relay works without killing myself. Warning, the following footage is performed by a trained professional. Do not recreate or reenact any of these activities because it may hurt or kill you. I always wanted to say that. The setup is as follows, it's pretty simple. This is a power supply set at 5 volts. This power supply is used to enable and disable the solid state relay. So you can see it like this. This is the heater. This is the oscilloscope with the probe separator here at the front. I've bought the separator for the video in which I showed why I blew up that stepper motor driver. It arrived a bit too late so I've never used that. But this can also be used to show 230 volt here on the screen without blowing up my oscilloscope. Normally you don't have to do this but because I'm going to do some experiments I'd like to check which one of these is the live wire. So I just plug in this. Well, I can use this to see which one of them is the live wire. So now you can see that it's not li lighting up and at this part it is. So I mustn't touch this one. I'm going to connect this wire to this solid state relay. First unplug this again. Don't connect both of them in here. And I intentionally made one longer than the other. The solid state relay is not enabled. Now it's enabled and now it's not. The plus side of the oscilloscope is connected to the output of the solid state relay and the minus is uh, connected to the neutral. Now everything is connected. The solid state relay is off. And guess what happens when I plug this in? You can see that there's a voltage on there and this thing is switched off. You can see that it's live, but this thing is switched off, so that's a bit odd. Well, there is 230 volts on there. But uh, if my theory is correct, then I should be able to touch it in the... What can go wrong? Hardly anything goes wrong in my channel. Oh, sh**. <laughs> oh, f***. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I completely destroyed this connector. Top, top. Oh. <laughs> Holy sh! Oh man. Okay, trust your theory. I've checked everything. This is live, okay. <sighs> so. You can see that I can turn this off. Okay, I have to come clean about something. In this video, I show how I touched this wire while there's 230 volts on this side, while this solid state relay is disabled. But it's 230 volts in comparison to this neutral. So if I was a real man, then I would have touched both of these wires while this one is disabled. And I should be able to remove that sine wave here at the screen. I was planning to do that. And two days before the recording, that's exactly what I've done. And everything went pretty well. I was just touching both wires and you could see that the signal on the screen disappeared. So that was, that was pretty cool and thought, well, I'm going to show that in this video. But at the day of recording, right before I was recording, I thought I'm going to check it one more time. I haven't recorded that. So I made a reconstruction of exactly what happened. To demonstrate the next thing, I'm going to connect this heater. Now I've connected the neutral to the heater and this is still the same, so it's still floating. And when I plug in the cord, then still the 230 volts is on here. This is still off by the way. When I'm going to touch the heater with this wire over here, then look at the screen. The voltage goes away and the heater isn't turning on of course. But now the whole 230 volts is across this relay. And not to this heater. The impedance is pretty low because it's a 1 kilowatt heater. So what it does, it drags the 230 volts, what, which is on here. It drags it down. So now a little bit of current is flowing through that heater. And when I'm going to switch it on, then this heater is going to heat up. 
So let's do that. So now I connected everything, it's plugged in, 230 volt is on the system. And when I'm going to hit that switch, you can see now it's 230 volts on there. So right now, there's actually, yes, this heater is heating up. And I already can feel it, I won't do it too long. And now I can show you what the zero crossing does. Um, single. Okay, because it's the zero crossing relay, it always goes on when the sine wave is going through zero. And that's why it's called zero crossing. And it has an advantage, because especially when this one kilowatt, oh, <laughs> it's pretty warm right now. When this one kilowatt heater is heating up and a, a regular switch is, sw is switching, well, at some random point and it switches here at the top, then a full current rush is running through here and that that's causes uh, a lot more stress and you can see lights dimming. But at this exact moment then there isn't running any current. I have some cold hands so this is nice. And I have two of these, one for this heater and one for this heater. I'm going to use the 12 volt bed output to control this one. And I'm going to use the 12 volt uh, extruded 2 output to control that one. And we're going to modify the firmware to do that and see if I, if I can use this board to control this heater, which would be pretty cool. So uh, let's head over to my computer. I've connected the duet board to my computer through USB. And I've opened up everything because it's the weather is awesome. And I've used this terminal to connect this board through my Wi-Fi. And if I go to the browser, I've used this configuration tool from uh, RepRap. And the only thing that I've changed was the, uh, the distances, of course. I've added a heated chamber, which is X2 to 1. And the important thing is that you use Bang Bang instead of PRD. PRD is modulating signal. We have a zero crossing relay. So if you're going to modulate that one, then most of the pulses aren't doing anything because that relay isn't crossing through zero. And if you use Bang Bang, it's fully on or fully off. Yeah, and at the end, I can click finish and download this uh, RepRap firmware. And this RepRap firmware can be uploaded here at the Duet test. And this is just a Duet test.local. But you can also connect through this uh, IP address that is given to you. I've used these guides to, to see how it works. It's pretty simple actually. Just uh, connect it with the terminal, use this configuration tool, download the firmware and upload it here. And that's it, those are the three steps. And now I can connect the heater to that board. Okay, I didn't expect this amount of work in order to get this silicon heater on this print bed with the small modification on this uh, aluminium profiles. I was able to put that heater on there. Now I've added a layer of ceramic insulation. I have to design and print something for this because these holes, they cannot be used anymore. But first I'm going to connect this to the duet board and see if I can heat it up.
Okay, everything is recording. <laughs> okay, I've connected the duet board to the power supply at 12 volts. So right now it's enabled. And I've connected the solid state relay. But I haven't connected this bed yet. I first want to check if I can enable that solid state relay. And I've opened the web server right here. I've done the same thing on my computer. So if I do something here, then it should also be seen on that computer. Well, it's already at 56 degrees, so you can see it's pretty warm here. Oh, well, it's a black surface, of course. And if I'm going to do it at 60, then it says active. And that solid stage relay is enabled. Well, right now the temperature isn't rising because um, I haven't connected the 230 volts yet. Yeah, it's already giving an error. Let's see if I can connect that, the 230 volt to that solid stage relay. Let's heat it up to 90 degrees and see what, ha what happens. Oh, why isn't it working? Well, I'm back inside so I can see what's happening. I was unable to see which of the wires was live and if that solid state relay was switching. So I'm back here. So let's see what happens if I'm going to set it at 60 degrees. And it's heating up. Nice. And it's, I thought it was heating up pretty fast. The firmware doesn't think so. The connections work, but I have to modify the firmware so it has a bit more time to heat up. But it looks like this is working. I can do the same thing with this heater. And I have a temperature sensor. I've managed to find a temperature sensor. And I have enabled my lights. Let's see if this heater will heat up. <laughs> the heater is warming up. So. Hardware wise, everything works. And I have to modify the firmware so it doesn't go into error state. Okay, I did a bit of research and it turns out that a PID control is compatible with the solid state relay. It says here, you can zoom in a bit. The PWM frequency is lowered to 10 Hertz on recent firmware, so it's compatible with the solid state relay. Well, it, it's five times slower than the frequency in Europe. So I can control the heater and the chamber with the PID. And I've made another mistake. I haven't uploaded this whole bundle to the duet board. The duet board was still running that stock configuration. I've uploaded this new configuration. Now you can see it has a bed and a chamber. Okay, <laughs> I just have sent this command M303H2S60, which means is that it's going to auto tune this heater to 60 degrees. Well, it's heating up pretty fast. 90 degrees already. Yeah, this thing is pretty hot. Oh, the tune of heater 2 failed due to bad curve fit. I'm going to do the same for, for the bed. Let's see if that works. Oh yeah. Oh man. This thing is getting warm. Today is an exciting day because within two hours I'm going live with Creality. <laughs> so. I have to clean up this whole mess. I'm going to show the Foldable and the 3 Pro. I'm going to talk about some of my other designs, including this one. As I've said, I'm going to add this to that enclosure. I'm going to add a print bed, of course, in there. I have to do auto tune again, because this is going to perform very different, especially when I'm going to add these fans uh, here. Uh, I'm still waiting for some parts for that, uh, that enclosure, but now I have the electronics working and the firmware and now I know what I'm doing. I've already bought this seven inch panel duet, which will, will be here at the front. That enclosure is going to be sick. One thing I still want to do is print those four corners so this print bed can be mounted on this plate and this plate can be mounted on there. This is it. I really hope you have enjoyed watching and learned a thing or two. I have learned a lot from this experience. And if you have questions or something isn't clear, then uh, leave a message. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. I decided to make the sickest possible enclosure that I'm able to make. I've lost myself in the process and now it's, maybe it's a bit too much. This is already too much, but it's going to be sick. I hope you have a great day and see you in the next video. Bye.